Hi, and welcome back to my workbench. First, Happy New Year's, and uh, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. 2021 was a bit long. And uh, having everybody around and leaving comments and uh, joining in on various technical discussions and other spots on YouTube and the internet in general is always a, always a great experience. So I appreciate everybody being here. If it's your first time showing up and you like these videos, please subscribe down below and give us a thumbs up. You're obviously a good-looking and discerning person for, you know, showing up on my YouTube channel. What we're looking at today is a... I, I'm never sure what kind of coating that is. I don't know if that's a butyl rubber sprayed on or if it's some kind of uh, just rubberized coating. But it's obviously gone horribly wrong because this, if I'm not mistaken, is a fairly recently produced joystick and it's, uh, it, it's coated with, well, schmoo and the deceased remains of anything that's come near it, basically. So I'm curious about two things, exactly how old this joystick is and uh, if I can clean that gunk off. One thing I think I'm going to do is probably give it a give it a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner, regardless of whether I can get this crap off or not. As you can see, it's it's coated everywhere. I don't think it's actually on the grips. Weirdly, it's it's just on the surfaces of the controller, which seems like a weird choice. I would think you'd want just the the grips to be grippier, but I guess they they put the stippling on the grips and. That's why they only put the weird conformal coating on the surfaces. I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine why you'd want the surface of your joystick to be sticky, but apparently that's what they went with. So that's going to have to all get cleaned off. And here's the inside. Let's see if we can find a date on this puppy. Just a note to myself, the shorter screws go on the internal stick uh, and something else. Uh, looks like the shorter screws are internal and the longer screws are external. All right, should be simple enough. So I'm not seeing a date on here, but I am finding a few interesting things. It looks like there's extra LED mounts for LEDs around each one of the analog joysticks. Also, there's a breakout port for your logic on the IC here, and it looks like that's probably for the analog controllers, probably test ports, something like that, on here. It's pretty neat. There's an Atmel chip on here as well, an Atmel 935. That's one I'm not familiar with, but I'll assume it's one of their 8-pin micros. Probably an 8-bit processor, or maybe not. It might be just something completely different although I'd assume it's probably a standard 8-bit. And then here's your logic blob patched over. I, I don't know what they use on these, if it's a Paduk or some specialty controller or just the same as the OEM, but delitted, or uh, maybe the OEM's delitted too. Can't say that I've looked inside a 360 controller recently. There's all of your pads for the contacts. Those seem to be okay. The Analog controller is a bit, eh, a bit crusty in here. I, it almost looks like the conformal coating or the rubber coating has uh, gotten in here too. That'd be fairly, fairly uh, coherent with the story from the inside of this. There's actually a bunch of coating inside here too that's not quite as worn as the outside, but still pretty nasty. So let's see if we can get the coating off with something I've got on the bench here. First, I'm gonna try some just 91% isopropyl. It does make a pretty good solvent for stuff like this. Unfortunately, it also makes a pretty good solvent on stuff you don't want to dissolve sometimes. So you do have to be careful about using it for cleaning. I've noticed it takes uh, most of the Nintendo, the older Nintendo paint straight off. So I uh, probably don't want to put it on your NES console or anything from that era where they didn't seal up the paint with anything against solvents. So that's certainly taking off some of the coating. That might be a good choice to clean it off if I had something I cared about more. 
this this I don't really uh, this is probably just going to go in a bath and get cleaned up I've got a ultrasonic cleaner I can load it up with some solvent and just sit it in there for as long as it needs to take off this junk that's the way I'd go if I had any kind of quantity to do of cleaning up anything really hmm still seems a bit sticky let's see if I can get the rest of that off Let me try that without a glove on. I can't really tell if this is... Oh, no, that's good. So that's a clean surface now. All right, so the isopropyl does the trick just fine. Let's see what else I've got around the shop that'll clean this off. I think I've got some ammonia-based Windex. That might even do a better job than the isopropyl. One second, let me run over and get that, and we'll see if it works. All right, and back with a couple of other cleaners. Try a 409, which is, according to the label, Dimethyl benzyl ammonium chloride, which in theory should be ammonium. If I'm wrong, just let me know down in the comments, but we'll see if this works anyway. And it's, eh, that doesn't seem like it's working nearly as well as the isopropyl alcohol as a solvent. No, not, not terribly happy with that. It didn't really take anything off. And for completeness sake, I've got some streak-free, shine, glass plus, uh, ammonia-free. I'm not actually sure what's in this. They don't have a label with any of the constituent components. So if your guess is as good as mine, I would assume maybe soap? A sudsing agent? So probably glyphosate? I don't know. It would be nice if they listed something about what's on here, aside from no ammonia, uh, no phosphorus, and the bottle's made of 25% post-consumer recycled plastic. So, no idea. But I would assume the ammonia-free window detergents are somewhat similar, so let's see how that does. And that's doing about as well as the 409, which is to say, meh, nothing. So those didn't work. I'm going to have to try some straight ammonia in a cleaner uh, in a, as a solution, see if that works. And this stuff is horrendous. So let me show you what this does. They, they actually made the caps for the controllers out of that junk, too, and I pulled it off one of them. This stuff is disintegrating so badly, it's it's just becoming chewing gum, essentially. I can take the cap for that and just turn it into a ball of putty. It's utterly nasty. I, I have to assume that something's wrong with the compound on this. I can't imagine why you'd ever want this property in a coating you're using on the surface of something, anyway. There might be other situations in which this is an appropriate material, but uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess this isn't one of them. There you go. Yeah, just chewy, gummy junk. Horrible. Ah, I ruined my gloves too. Not something you ever want to really get on your hands when you're using a joystick, certainly, or when you're using your drill or any situation like that. Normally, I run into this problem when I've got a drill and I have exposed it to some kind of solvent and it's eaten away at the rubber, but this stuff doesn't appear to have been exposed to anything. This just looks like it was getting gummy all on its own. So, what I'll probably end up doing is just taking a vibratory cleaner, the uh, ultrasonic job, putting this in there, throwing alcohol in to clear it off, and then just straining out the alcohol for reuse as a cleaning agent. There you go. This will probably work fine after a bit of cleaning. I'll put it back together. Not sure what I'll do with it. It's just a joystick. Probably end up giving it away, I assume, but I do enjoy fixing these things. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.